this is really where the story starts. And this is why I'm saying look at the chess moves. Is Mufti Muhammad Sadiq. When I come to New York this time, I've been focusing on Islam in this city. Look, Islam started, as you know, in Arabia with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, he said, uh, Mehdi and the Messiah will come. Mirza Ghulam Mehmed of Qadian comes and says, I am that Mehdi, I am that Messiah. He claimed he was the Messiah in India, the Mehdi. He then actually had a duel with Alexander Dawi, who ran the city of Zion. And lo, Dawi perished. But that was just the beginning. That was the first real substantive means of Islam being propagated within this country. Everywhere around the world he's preaching. He's sending letters to America, to England, to Egypt, to, you know, the Hejaz. Of course, we have to take into account those poor West Africans who were princes, kings, scholars, and they were taken into slavery. And they actually were the first people to bring Islam here. We would think of Alexander Russell Webb. He was one of the first prominent white converts to Islam. One of the original ways he was exposed to Islam was by contact with Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. After he died, they established the Khalafa system, which is still in place today. And all of the people around Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and Qadian, they are highly, highly erudite individuals. These are people that speak multiple languages. People are sent around the world. In the next 20 years, these Ahmadi Muslim individuals are spreading Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, the Mahdi's claims, in America, in England, in France, in Iran, in Egypt, literally Africa, all over the globe. This is why I'm saying look at the chess moves, is Mufti Muhammad Sadiq. And he is dispatched to England. He is here for three years in England, right? Um, he then goes to America. Fast forwarding past transatlantic slavery, fast forwarding past Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's claims, what happened then? It was actually his companion, Mufti Muhammad Sadiq. He was the first Islamic missionary in this country. And he was building on those existing relationships that Ahmed had already built within India into America. When he got here, he was put in detention. He had an incredibly tough time. He stayed in detention for several weeks. Paradoxically, actually, the newspapers caught onto it and gave him more attention. Just one of the parts of the south side that's retained in Islamic essence. And I'm thinking, this goes back more than 100 years. Mufti Sadiq was the first Muslim missionary to this country. He established a mosque in Bronzeville, in Chicago. And from there, the Islamic environment grew. Chicago is one of the longest lasting missions in America. This is where Islam came to in America. He was an Indian missionary, erudite, well-educated, multilingual. He only spent three years in this country establishing a mosque, establishing a community, and those achievements that he made then still live on today. Now has established an entire nationwide network of Muslim congregations. The people he built on, or the people he instructed within his three years of 1920 to 1923, mm -hmm. he mostly preached to African Americans. He preached to white people too. In one circumstance in Chicago, America is highly, highly racialized. They saw black people coming in. They said, we want nothing to do with this. Although some white people did stay as Ahmadi Muslims under Mufti Muhammad Sadiq's message. So he is gone. After 1923, he's gone, right? He goes back to Paris, then he goes back to India. This is really where the story starts. He is spreading a message of Christianity has failed you, African-Americans. They enslaved you. Learn Arabic. It's your original language. Go and learn about Africa because that's your heritage. These are the exact same things by, used in, by the Nation of Islam 40 years later, right? Mufti Sadiq was a pioneer in this method and he worked with Marcus Garvey. It, perhaps he also saw and, and read Blyden and other black thinkers of the time. You know, he worked with Garvey, he worked with black thinkers and black outreach media. Um, the crux of the message that Mufti Sadiq established in those three short years this is the message that was taken up by those people that followed him. Ahmadi mission kept sending missionaries. It was the only Islamic mission and the first Islamic mission. It had mosques all across the country, multiracial congregations all across the country, only community to do that. Islam came in and it embedded itself within the Western world and communities sprouted up. I mean, having been here, I was in a neighborhood or multiple neighborhoods in the south side of Chicago that are full of the nation of Islam. What I'm trying to get at is all of those efforts and fruits that we see today are coming from what happened 100 years ago, right here in Bronzeville in Chicago. Several missionaries came afterwards, again, Indians, and these were people spreading Islam that was, that this was completely unprecedented. 
And then we can look at other missionaries as well. And what did they do? And the reason I want to focus on these people is because these things were parallel to the other Islamic movements. And actually, they set the tone. For example, Sufi Bengali, he actually wrote the first sirah in America, the first biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There was the annual conventions that were established yearly and have been ongoing since then. It was the establishment of mosques all around the country. Now, I think what I'm developing more and more is people should see the Ahadi Muslim community as one of the first black power Muslim movements. It was transnational, it was pan-national at the same time, it was post-colonial. Now, that's all well and good, but really a lot of this was about shaking the spiritual shackles of colonialism. That was one of the messages in the early Muslim Sunrise. 